it's pretty harsh conditions out here. It's very dry. It's the, the sun is very intense. The farmers uh, within this 90,000 acre uh, water district are not receiving any of the water that they typically receive. Um, thousands of acres of farmland are being fallowed because there just isn't enough fresh water. Even if the drought ended tomorrow, uh, we still need to think and still need to plan long term for where we're going to get additional fresh water uh, in California. Historically, California has been blessed with lots of water. We just allocate it in a funny way. There's long-standing controversy in California about who owns the water, how water should be distributed between farms and cities and the environment. We use about 80% of our water for agriculture and about 20% for cities. So the people who have the money to pay for expensive water tend to live in cities, and the people who um, are struggling to pay the price of water tend to be the farmers and the people who live in the rural communities. Uh, you know, it was Mark Twain that said, right, uh, our calls for drinking and water is for fighting. The city needs the farmer, uh, but the city also needs water. And the farmer needs the city because that's where he sells his crops. So the two are sort of reliant on each other, but we're, we're starting to fight over water. Typically, when you think about desalination, what you think about is large-scale plants on the ocean consuming a lot of energy and having a pretty significant environmental impact. And what we're trying to do here with this facility is get people to think about desalination very differently, to think about what we can do to make desalination sustainable, scalable, and affordable in order to make desalination really a very usable, uh, very scalable source of additional fresh water, we need to look at not just the energy efficiency, but where the energy comes from. And that's why what we're focused on here is using solar energy, sunlight, something that we have in abundance here in California to produce fresh water. At one point in time, the entire Central Valley actually contained ocean water, and when the water when the water receded, what was left is a lot of naturally occurring salts um, that are in the soil itself. And so when land like this is irrigated, what happens is those salts dissolve in the water and they come out with the drainage water. We're eliminating the drainage water by treating it and removing the salts. And then we're, we're using solar desalination as a way to provide an alternate supply of water. As the mirror rotates, um, it moves to the position where uh, sun is directly hitting uh, the surface of the mirrors and that sunlight is reflected onto the center receiver tube where we can generate temperatures as high as about 350 to 400 degrees C. So very, very high temperatures that can be used to make high quality steam and the steam is then sent to the desalination plant to separate fresh water from salt water. We're capturing the steam and condensing it, and that becomes the product water. And then the concentrate, the brine, will actually move from the first stage to the second stage to the third stage. And as it moves through the system, it becomes more and more concentrated until at the end, it's so highly concentrated that the salts actually come out of solution and form solids um, at the bottom um, on their own. Long term, our population is growing. A couple of years of no snowpack, and if we skip an El Nino, we're in serious trouble. So you either have to desalinate along the coast, or you have to desalinate inland, or you have to reuse. It's not so far-fetched to think about cities in the United States running out of water. The real shame would be if California got itself in that situation, because we have more than enough water for our cities. We just have to figure out how to be more efficient about how we use water and not use water for purposes that aren't in our best interest.